You don't want to be overexposed. You don't want to be all in. You don't want to be all in and then on leverage because when it pulls back 50%, you're going to be freaking out. Like my plan is always an operation, which is to take take money to cash um, consistently. So I have a, because I don't believe in um, bull bear, four year cycles and nuclear winters. I think we're just doing more of the same. We've, this is the second time we've gone up and we've retraced more than 50%. And then we're going up and they're just choppy. It's just choppy times. You don't want to be overexposed. You don't want to be all in. You don't want to be all in and then on leverage because when it pulls back 50%, you're going to be freaking out. The, there's a thing about freaking out is um, the most tragic thing about freaking out is not the pain of freaking out, but the loss of your IQ. <laughs> When, when you're freaking out, you don't think straight and you do the stupidest things like sell the absolute bottom because now you've got to cover the pain you're under and not in the sleepless nights because you were overexposed. So I've always got a chunk in cash, even though maxis, you know, like us, I'm also could, could consider myself a maxi when I talk about Bitcoin as a, a monetary standard. But us maxis like to think all in and never hold that duty sinking create for it. But I'm like, I'm just practical. It's like I, I I'm gonna have this percent. I think it's like more, my minimum is always have ten percent in cash. And that ten percent in cash, I know that like that self preservation of my um, ability to think. <laughs> I, uh, that's my strategy is is to have between ten to twenty. I probably want to ramp it even. Um, 20 to 30 percent maybe even 40 percent in cash as we go into this year Um, but I I would say that because cash you can we can currently yield on cash and we can we can beat the monetary dilution that the Fed's printing like I'm looking for high yield on USD honestly that's better than real estate (laughs) Um, real estate growth my thing is now to go like two liquid buckets one is uh, crypto bitcoin predominantly um, actually the only thing I hodl is bitcoin and then I have the stable coins that are yielding and then I have speculative the speculative thing called a exchange account which holds any number of shit coins and trades or leverage instruments um, and that's my exposure to the exotic stuff including altcoins my if i ever buy ethereum i'm only buying it on the exchange maybe that's wrong you don't right? cold storage it up. i never cold storage uh, unless it's like um i'm playing DeFi. You know, then you have to use that Ethereum network. It's going to take me to the cleaners every time I click some MetaMask wallet. It's two euros, it's like two hundred dollars per per transaction. Doing some weird thing, so like oh, sorry, some very interesting, innovative um, smart contract. No, no, no. I mean it too. It's like it's cool experiments, but God, it's. <laughs> You got to be trading like a lot of money before you that gas fee is worth it compared to like doing something on the exchanges. Yeah, so that's that's how I'm playing it. I'm putting more into cash, sort of, because I don't see us like being so cyclical and so easy to read these cycles. Like, who read the top? Who read sixty nine thousand said we're going to go to thirty two point nine in no, the next few months? We were Nobody, going to 100, right. dude. We were going to 100. I think it even surprised institutions who were responsible for the initial sell-off, but then the whole thing went risk-off even more, and then the people that were ready to step back and waited, and like, whoa, I'm not timing it as much, um, even though I time it in the exotic exchange basket. I'm just like, the cash, sit on yield. And let's be honest, like, Bitcoin's not, like, doing a 2015 to 2017 ever again. That was 133x. The only way it's going to do that is the Armageddon, financial Armageddon, um, where you don't even care what the US dollar is worth because it's it's hyperinflated away. And I don't think that's going to happen. Um, so I'm thinking longer term, like here's my cash exposure, here's my investments in companies, here's my house, here's Bitcoin, here's cash yield. And it's just sensible allocations. Sensible for me, it's probably a bit risk on for most people. I'm well overexposed to tech and, and Bitcoin. It's um, at least it's not 100% Bitcoin, and I do want to go more, more uh, sort of balanced. Yeah, that's that's how I see it. Like I looked at the stock to flow uh, model, and the next four years, if it plays out and we're underperforming, and I don't think it's going to hold um, because of this new flow coming in, that's about 100%, 110% annualized. And if you're in cash yield, you can get from 20 to 50% annualized. US dollar's got its place because if you're in cash yield, what's your maximum drawdown in any one month? 
it's positive. It's never a drawdown unless you get like unless your instrument is highly exotic and it breaks down. Like、um, you're yielding off a DeFi network that's like on Ethereum that just got, completely got hacked or something. But that's not what I'm talking about. Bitcoin's growth going from a one trillion dollar asset class into ten trillion.、Um, the rate at which it's going to go. Um, if you're into exotic investments, which you know Bitcoin's kind of still in that, that basket, you can still you can now sort of look into early stage VC, early stage seed and VC baskets that can can reach that kind of performance. Yeah, back in the you know you see how the success of、um, Coinbase floating for over a hundred billion dollars that was an investment was it in twenty eleven twenty twelve two thousand twelve or something? The guys that invested in Coinbase. Um, did not outperform Bitcoin. Like they would have got twice as much money if they just held their Bitcoin, and that was the most successful、um, float we've seen so far of a, a Bitcoin-based or a crypto-based company. So it was always about just stay it, keep it in Bitcoin. But now we're in this phase where 100 and 10 percent annualized in an exotic instrument. You could do that from um, VC um, if you get the right bet. Yeah, it's an interesting time. I, I don't think we're in that era now where we how we thought about it in twenty twelve, twenty thirteen, twenty fourteen. Where this thing, when it goes, it's it's life changing money.、Um, it's just a very sensible investment. That's high volatility. It's high gain, and it certainly should be a part of most people's investment portfolio just to balance out the other things.、Um, but it's not a, a go to the moon vehicle like one dollar turns into、uh, a million. <laughs> like well, those days are over for Bitcoin.、Uh, maybe if you got a, a, a punk and minted it for free, and now it's multiple millions. You know, that's your vehicle for that.、Um, and I think the kids know that, right? Like、um, the young ones are, are trading these things and they're really getting into it, and I think good on them. Like, why not? That stuff is there. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over three thousand percent in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system, makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn five hundred thousand, one million dollar. You have to wait until you're fifty, sixty, seventy in the traditional financial system, and you probably will still be broke, and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination, as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar, and I'm from Germany, as you can hear. And things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. In fact, is there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them, and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example. One of the key points is your exchange, and one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges, but and this is a big but. You won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages, and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk. He is not a crypto guy, but the moment he recommended Dogecoin. It went through the roof to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who, and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist. Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link, and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link, and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.